Since our first graduation in 1866, it has been the custom at North Central College for a distinguished speaker to share a message of insight and inspiration. It's our last opportunity to impart a lesson of wisdom before we send off our, gra our graduates off into the world. Today's speaker is particularly well suited to take on that challenge. She holds a leadership role in global economic development and is working to better the lives of women and children in Africa by reducing poverty. Dr. Franny A. Leotier was named one of the 100 most influential people in Africa in her role as Executive Secretary of the African Capacity Building Foundation. She is a good friend of mine and graciously accepted my invitation to speak here today. Traveling all the way from Toulouse, France to be with us, it is my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Franny A. Leotier. Good morning, North Central College. It's a great honor for me to be here today, and I'd like to thank Dr. Troy Harmon, a close friend, for his outstanding leadership and for bringing an entrepreneurial spirit to the world of teaching and learning. Let's give a round of applause to the new president. Thank you to Board Chair Steve Hoft and the entire Board of Trustees. And I've learned from him the, the, the role of humor in leadership in the few moments we've been interacting. Thank you to the extraordinary North Central College faculty sitting right here in front of us. Thank you. Thank you to the members of the class of 2013. I will be forever connected to this graduating class as a recipient of an honorary degree. I recognize you all worked a lot harder to earn North Central College degrees than I did mine. I just had to take a plane from Toulouse to get here. I'll also be forever connected to, to the mayor, Mayor Prado. Congratulations, Mr. Mayor, for the nearly 50 years of service, and I heard from you about policing and how young students who came to graduate here were a pride and joy of yours. Congratulations for your service to the city of Naperville. <clears throat> Graduates, I want to congratulate you but also the many people who supported you in your life journey to this point. Parents, siblings, grandparents, aunts, uncles, family and friends. We have a proverb in Africa that says, the lizard that jumped from the high Iroko tree to the ground said he would praise himself if no one else did. So praise yourself and give yourself a round of applause and another round to all those who have supported you all along the way. Indeed, you are extremely, extremely fortunate to be graduating at this time when there are so many opportunities to be tapped and there are so many new kinds of jobs to be invented. We're celebrating this year the 40th anniversary since the first phone call was made on a mobile phone. Today, there are more mobile phones in Africa than in Europe and America combined. In Africa, a mobile phone is used for banking, for buying, for learning, all at once. And recently in Kenya, citizens used text messages to oversee the recent election. This year, we also celebrated the 10th anniversary of YouTube. YouTube is 10 years old. Today, you can continue learning about other cultures using all the excellent opportunities 
available on YouTube. When I was doing my undergraduate studies in Dar es Salaam in 1983, I had to use journals which my professor had carried with him from his studies in America. I was to assess the safety of an intersection in a secondary city called Mwanza near Lake Victoria. And I used these journals to find out how can you solve accident problems when you don't have the use of traffic lights, because we didn't have traffic lights in Tanzania. Incidentally, as I was looking at the research and the references that I used back then, I noticed one of the examples was a photograph from here in Naperville, Illinois. And along with that photograph was an article recommending a solution to a, an intersection that had a lot of accidents, and they recommended that you add supplemental signs before you get to the intersection. So driving from the airport with Emmanuel, I tried to spot the intersection, but I was not successful because technology has changed so much and has gone beyond the be prepared to stop sign a few yards from the intersection. Today, 30, 30 years later, if you had to do the same research, you'd find nearly 5 million videos on YouTube. And they would not only tell you about the safety of intersections, they'd even show you the risky behavior of particular drivers, whether they are traffic lights, the very famous roundabouts, or stop signs. With Google Earth, you may even be able to spot a specific driver's behavior on a given intersection as it is happening. In Rwanda, they are using YouTube to get orphaned gorillas adopted and to help adoptive parents from America and other parts of the world to see a newborn animal they have just named. So the next time you see someone thumping their chest, don't judge them very harshly. They may have just come from viewing their newly named baby gorilla. We can only imagine what other exciting discoveries lie ahead and to which your youthful talent can be channeled to unleash. What new uses lie ahead for technologies yet to be discovered? What productivity increases possible? And what sources of information will be available to replace YouTube? In fact, nearly 30 years ago, when I made a similar trip to come to America, to pursue a new beginning, life was quite different. When I left my native Tanzania, I bid a brave farewell to my family. I exchanged all my earnings from a job on a construction site into US dollars from Tanzanian shillings. They were worth a small fortune to me, a total of 17 US dollars. At the time, America was facing high interest rates and high inflation, unlike today. I must tell you, I did not know about inflation and interest rates back then. I learned about that from classes in economics and working in Brazil at the height of its hyperinflation years while at the World Bank. 17 US dollars in 1984 would be 33 US dollars today. After paying for the taxi fare from the airport to the campus, I was left with $5 to live on until I could get a job. Thanks to my experience in road construction, I quickly got a research fellowship to study the maintenance practices of the 50 states from harmonization of the federal highway maintenance standards here in America. So from looking at safety to looking at maintenance, but still in the federal highway system and in the cities of the United States of America. The research fellowship had a significant impact on my life. Each of you has a unique story about gaining practical experience while at North Central. That experience likely changed your life. Cherish that memory. The practical experiences will make a difference when you are out there competing for a job in today's labor market. It took traveling to some 100 countries during the time I worked with the World Bank for me to appreciate the vast differences in culture and the role information could play in raising productivity. Many of you have also taken advantage of the opportunity to travel internationally 
In fact, I was very impressed seeing all the flags coming here, which shows that the student body is also international. In Peru, I learned firsthand the cost of poor roads by asking a farmer who was coming down the steep hills from a small village called Corca to sell his produce in the market in Cusco. His experience using a llama to go down with potatoes and going up with oil and sugar allowed the team of transport experts and economists to calculate the rate of return of paving the road that goes from his village. And this analysis got the project approved by the World Bank's board to finance the investment. In Bhutan, I learned how to balance energy generation through hydroelectricity while preserving the environment and trading with neighbors, especially India. So what I learned from traveling helped me tremendously at work and in life. I encourage you to go out there and discover the world. Do it now while you have the energy and the curiosity to learn from and enjoy new experiences. If you cannot travel internationally or take up an engagement in another country, use the technology we have available to learn about other cultures, to learn about other countries, and to interact with others, whether through Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, or other advanced technologies. When I first came to America, I would stay informed about what's happening back home by writing long letters. I don't know how many of you have written a letter recently. And I'd make short phone calls once a semester. Today, I send text messages to my family, and they keep on top of issues by surfing the internet. Every time I visit my siblings, I bring out the long letters I used to write and say, why can't you send me long letters with details like you used to? So last summer, I put together into one document all the text messages and emails that we had sent each other over a course of three days. It ended up being a collective book with tidbits and memories of our childhood. Haba na haba hujaza kibaba, we say in Swahili, which means drop by drop and the jar gets filled. The ease of communication makes us forget at times the string of messages we are sending and their collective impact over time. Your day-to-day -day interactions while here at North Central have given you grounding that will be valuable for a lifetime. Dr. Jennifer Jackson of the English department here said in her work defining the value of rhetoric, I quote, at base, Rhetoric came into being because people disagree, perceive the world differently from one another, and even argue on what constitutes a simple fact." Unquote. In your lifetime, you will be interacting with people from different cultures and different countries. Rhetoric, that is persuasive communication, it will come in handy to sort out disagreements, that may crop up at work, or to help you make choices that are steeped in values without seeming to be rude or dismissive of others. How you use these skills will likely impact your happiness at work and your productivity. Consider some important questions. In the future, what new ways of doing your job could be defined? What new ways will exist for solving society's problems? Research tells us that in your lifetime, you'll change career five to 10 times. The broad, comprehensive liberal arts education from North Central will help you because it will help you transition from one job to another. Some of you will be at the forefront of inventing new types of jobs. Some of you will work in countries you have never visited before and languages you are yet to learn. I know firsthand the value of a broad liberal arts education. I learned from watching and learning from my father as I was growing up, as he struggled to make choices in life. My father was born between the First and Second World Wars. He studied to be a mining engineer during the time of colonial rule, but because he was in a school where he had to learn an instrument, 
he also studied music. He became quite talented on several instruments, but after he graduated, he could only afford to buy a guitar. He got a job in a copper mine, and when the mine closed, he used his music skills to make a living. He composed music on a guitar and performed in a band where he recruited his sisters as singers, a cheap way to start a band. He wrote songs that got people excited to vote in a referendum for the independence of Tanganyika and worked to register people to vote. He was a creative recording artist, not as prolific as Cheryl Milnes, who attended North Central, going to Drake University after that. My father certainly did not have the rich baritone of, as Cheryl, but from now on I have a talking point, as Cheryl and I both have honorary degrees from North Central College. From my father I learned rhythm and got interested in mathematics from watching him play on the guitar and compose music. I learned physics when he taught me to estimate the weight of the elephant from its footprint. He retired as a farmer when preferences shifted and his music was no longer popular. His music is now considered the oldies. I learned agriculture from him and I paid for the GRE exam to qualify for study in an American university graduate school using income that I earned from growing tomatoes. My learning in agriculture helped me use science in a unique way for productivity improvements on the tomato patch then, and today it's helping me understand the role of women in transforming Africa's agriculture. Whether it was math or physics, music or agriculture, learning from his broad education helped me get ahead. And as for learning, it does not end when you stray beyond this campus or step beyond it. It continues on the job and in life. I learned how to handle tense labor relations while interning on a construction site to maintain a rural road in Tanzania. Those skills are helping me now, for those of you who are parents, to be a better mentor to my children, to be a better leader at work, and to be an advisor to stakeholders involved in the extractive industry. At the end of the day, what matters is how you use what you learn particularly from this great education you are getting here. As President Harmon stated a few minutes ago, your class represents the ideals of this college's founders. And you have been worthy role models. In fact, the speech we just heard, I, if I had closed my eyes, I wouldn't know this was being made by a student who is graduating from North Central. And you'll be mentors, therefore, for students those who follow in your footsteps. In addition to being informed and productive and having a job and responsibilities in society, I also expect that you'll use your education to become a good citizen, good citizen leaders. I'm reminded of the collapse of the building in Dhaka, Bangladesh, with a death toll of 1,127 and 2,500 injured. Many major brand companies purchase clothes from factories in Bangladesh. What is the role of ethics in garment purchasing agreements? What's the responsibility of consumers as they exert their preferences in the malls? These are among the questions you'd have to resolve, whether as a lawyer for a purchaser, a citizen buying a t-shirt, a banker financing construction of a factory, or while blogging or tweeting about similar incidents. North Central in its leadership ethics and values program known as LEV says on its website, and I quote, in today's environment of questionable ethical practices by many of our business, government, and medical leaders, it is not surprising that companies and communities are looking to higher education to produce graduates prepared to think critically about such issues and analyze the values those practices are rooted in." Unquote. Your education at North Central instills the values and skills necessary to be good citizen leaders, 
you will have to exercise those values and use those skills in new and challenging ways. My main message to you is simple. Use the grounding in values and ethics to be a good steward of the society in which you live. Use your skills to become a good citizen leader of this earth. Live up to the challenges that life and work present you. Live your lives such that the next generation can tackle another set of issues and not be responsible for writing the ones we have messed up. I don't mean to say that all you strive to do will be successful, because many times we fail. Sometimes our failures can be spectacular. But when we learn from failure, it allows us to succeed in ways unimaginable before. Today, we behold the ultimate result of years of hard work and resolve. The passage of time and expenditure of effort that has brought our graduates to this point has been navigated by others before you. Indeed, looking back, I have used many examples from my personal experience to share with you what I have learned. Despite a rather challenging beginning, the journey took turns for better pastures and gentler gradients. One thing that became evident in my life is that with the right values, engagement in productive work, and perseverance in the face of obstacles, anything is possible. Today, I stand before you graduates as a living testimony to what it means to struggle through education and to learn through the opportunities life brings your way. I stand certain that many of you would succeed and surpass the achievements of many who have come before you, so long as you put what you have learned to practical use. Consider that what becomes of your life is largely determined by what you make of it and how you weave the strands of opportunities presented to you at each stage. During your stay here at North Central College, various classes and learning activities occupied you, which have resulted in the degrees you are earning today. Real life begins tomorrow, and from the day you set foot in the job market with newly acquired skill sets. As you venture into the real world, I can tell you that life will come with its own challenges. It has been said that contest is part of life, and it should not be unexpected when challenges come our way. What is more important is the adaptability we demonstrate in responding to such challenges and the resilience that gets born through doing so successfully over time. Today's graduation sets a new course, defines a new pitch, and puts you on an upward curve. Whatever you may do, and wherever you may find yourself, always pause to ask, what has changed in my way of doing things since graduation? If you can truthfully answer this question with at least one major change, then surely you are rendering good account of your stay on this campus. I will be cheering as you become the generation of leaders who stand tall in the world. Let me reinforce a few points to conclude. You are most lucky to be graduating at this time. For that reason alone, it's not out of place to expect very high standards of performance from all of you. I am pleased to learn of your varied accomplishments and to have, I have no doubt that you are primed for success. But remember, this is just the beginning. In recent times, we have seen the emergence of dizzying discoveries in various fields that are lifting quality of life and opportunities to new heights. We've removed a billion people out of poverty, one billion. I believe that in this graduating class, we have the next big discoveries and major world contributions. It's not only possible, it is statistically realistic, it is achievable, and I urge you to go for it, my dear friends and classmates. I'd like to end by quoting Nelson Mandela. I quote, we ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, handsome, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? 
unquote. I wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. Be informed about what is going on around you and around the world at large. Be involved in seeking solutions to the challenges facing your community or society at large. Be principled and guided by a sense of responsibility to your families, community, country, and planet, and be productive. Use your talent to excel and to push ahead for better tomorrows. Congratulations, class of 2013. God bless you. God bless North Central College. God bless the United States of America that has given me so much to be thankful for. Thank you.